Hi, Wayne Bryan here from Music Theatre Wichita, here to tell you just a little bit about our grand finale for the 2022 season and to tell you why it means so much to me. You might notice that I'm coming to you from my office out here in Southern California, where I have brought the recordings, books, souvenir programs, playbills, all of the things that make up my rather extensive musical theater collection. And I'll tell you later why that's appropriate to this discussion. But first, an invitation. Wichita audiences will soon have the rare opportunity to come to the air-conditioned comfort of the Century Two Concert Hall and experience the delightful, Tony Award-winning musical comedy, The Drowsy Chaperone, for seven performances only, August 17th through 21st. The Drowsy Chaperone. What an odd title. What a unique show. And what a unique history of how it came to be. The Drowsy Chaperone first stumbled to life at a bachelor party, of all things, in Canada on August 9, 1998, in the back room of a Toronto club called the Rivoli. Two well-loved members of Toronto's Second City comedy troupe were about to get married. The engaged couple were named Janet Vandergraaff and Bob Martin. And all their friends knew that Bob had an obsession with old-fashioned musical comedies. So as entertainment for the party, all these creative friends got together and invented a brand new golden oldie, a 40-minute imitation vintage musical about a Broadway star named Janet Vandergraaff, who is about to marry a fellow named Robert Martin. Well, the show was so hilarious and so well received that night that they decided to expand it and to enter it into the Toronto Fringe Festival. Bob Martin came on board as one of the main writers and they created for him a role of an anonymous narrator simply referred to as the man in chair who can serve as a guide for the audience to walk them through the evening's mischief. This expanded version went over even better than the short one did, and a commercial producer from Canada, David Mervish, came on board and started financing bigger and bigger productions of it, ending up at Toronto's Winter Garden Theater, which was a thousand-seat venue. At this point, American producer Roy Miller came on board. Now, Roy was a member of the National Alliance for Musical Theater, which you may have heard us talk about before. It's an organization of which Music Theater Wichita is a founding member. Now, every fall in New York, the National Alliance presents a festival of new works, showcasing eight to ten new musicals that have never been seen in New York City. This festival is where such shows as Come From Away, Thoroughly Modern Millie, Children of Eden, and Honk were first showcased. And this is where I encountered the Drowsy Chaperone for the first time in 2004. At the Festival of New Works, each presentation is only given a 45 minute running time. And the Drowsy Chaperone had such a convulsive array of laughter from all of these theater lovers that it ran out of time and we didn't get to see how the story ended. The Amundsen Theater immediately picked up the rights for the American premiere in 2005, and from there it went swiftly and rapturously to its Broadway opening in 2006, where it got rave reviews and five Tony Awards, including Best Book and Best Score. Okay, I guess this is where my theater collection and I come into the picture. I started collecting as a child, starting with 78 RPM children's records, then moving on to 45s, and then to LPs, and then to cassettes and CDs. Lots of CDs. When movies became available on VHS, I collected hundreds of those. Moving on to laser discs, and then DVDs and Blu-rays. I also collected books, playbills, scripts, scores, and souvenir programs. While I was living in New York, I became a sort of go-to person when actors or designers or directors were trying to research a show. And then when I moved to Wichita to learn how to be a producer, my collection and my reputation came with me. Now, in The Drowsy Chaperone, the so-called man in chair, is a fella who sits alone every night in his wretched little apartment listening to records of long-forgotten musicals 
On this particular occasion, it's his favorite show from 1928, the mythical musical, The Drowsy Chaperone. On this night, his imagination becomes so vivid that the characters start coming to life in his apartment, and he is carried magically back into the Broadway of the 1920s. Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime, wedding bells will celebrate our happy wedding time. Someone hasn't come, someone isn't here. Where is Jenny Van der and when will she appear? Along the way, the man in chair gives the audience background on the actors who originally played those roles, and he also reveals things about himself probably more than he means to. Bob Martin, who created this role in the original Broadway cast, was absolutely brilliant, just wonderful. Nevertheless, once The Drowsy Chaperone opened on Broadway and my friends started seeing it, I started getting these phone calls. Uh, Have you seen that show? Do those writers know you? Are you that guy? Well, I hope there are some big differences between me and the man in chair. His life consists of dreaming about the glamorous world of musicals that he never participated in, whereas in my life I have been privileged to earn my living and enjoy my life in the professional musical theater for the past 50 years, the last 34 spent at the glorious Music Theater Wichita. Nonetheless, I do feel a kinship for the man in chair and I love him a lot. And I love how the show amuses us and entertains us and then touches us and somehow celebrates the power of theater and music to make our lives richer and more meaningful. I loved performing this role when Music Theater Wichita first presented it in 2009, and this time I have the added joy of being directed by Brian J. Markham, who appeared on Broadway in The Drowsy Chaperone. So I hope we will see you at the show. If you love musical theater, you will love The Drowsy Chaperone.